Hey there, this is Brandon and Kish, and this is part 3 of the debugger tutorial for the MP Lab. And in this tutorial, we're going to discuss how to change inputs, uh, particularly for this tutorial for uh, the digital inputs, so on and off. This is actually fairly simple. Uh, right now, we're in our debugging mode, obviously. So, what we're going to do is we're going to go to our debugger. Or you go down to stimulus you can see a list of a few things here the one you want is new workbook you're gonna get a window like this here uh, all these tabs have different functions they perform different operations all of it has to do with inputs um, just a quick rundown this uh, async here is so that we can press a button and change an input the pin register action says if we want to change inputs according to time, so according to how long it's been since the processor started processing. The advanced pin register, this is if we want certain, um, certain inputs that change based on conditions. For instance, say you had a something like a transistor, which is a switch, an electric switch, and it turned on and off your sensor that's analog. Well, you might want it so that when your output for your transistor, say it's RC0, when RC0 is 1, you may want to read your analog signal, which setting that up is actually in another tutorial, setting up an analog input. But uh, just to give you an idea, that might be a reason why you'd want to use something like this. The clock stimulus, I'm actually not 100% sure. Uh, I believe it has something to do with the clock cycle, um, whether it's on an upswing or downswing. To be honest, I'm not really sure, but for this tutorial, it's, it's really we don't really need it, especially for the project we're working on. Uh, register injection actually has to do with the analog signals, and we'll get to that later in another tutorial. Uh, register trace. Uh, I also believe this has to do with analog signal. Um, I'm actually going to have to do a little more research after this video, after this tutorial. But for right now, for this tutorial, the only one that we're worried about is this ASYNCH. And what this window is going to allow us to do is it allows us to select several pins on the PAC. So any of the pins on port A, B, or C. Um, it even allows us to select AN0 through um, 10, which to be honest, I'm not quite sure why that is. Actually, I believe there's more. Yeah, AN11. Um, so it, it, we select our pin here. We select how it reacts when we press the button. The width and units uh, are actually do not apply to this tutorial. I'm sure there's some sort of input that if we selected it that we'd have to use with our units, but for this tutorial we're not going to use it. And you have a comments message, which to me is probably the most important part because we can list here what we want the button to represent. So what I'm going to start is, is we're still using the same code from all the other tutorials. And what we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and set our first button to equal RA's, I'm sorry, RC0. Let me select RC0. Okay. And now we have to decide what we want it to do when we press the button. Well, I don't like having two buttons to set it high and low, so I like it to toggle. And I believe pulse high and pulse low are just uh, for like one clock cycle it would go high, and one clock cycle would go low. However, I'm not sure about this. I'm not sure how this works. Um, so for now, we're just going to use toggle. And like I said, since we're using toggle and we're using the inputs, these don't apply. And I'm going to put in here a bump sensor. Since this is most likely what most of us or most people are going to use this for the uh, inputs, such as a bump sensor. And we also want to use uh, RC0 because in our code, uh, RC0 is also an input. So, I'm sorry, RC1. Didn't mean to say RC0. We're going to set it up the same way, to toggle. So, what this, um, we're going we're gonna to set this to bump sensor left. Okay. 
you set this to like bump sensor front. And it's a great idea to always label your inputs so you know what you're trying to do. All right, so now you'll see our fire button here has a little arrow on it, indicating that we can actually press these to do whatever we set them up. Now I have a output window that's just not displayed on the screen because I have it lower than what the video capturing is doing. But if you notice here, on your output window, you have a build tab, version control, find files, and you have MP Lab Simulator or Sim. And this is also good. I should have probably showed you guys this in the first tutorial. But it'll show you basic information or, or some stats about what's going on with your program as it runs. So as you can see, if we press a button, you'll see here it'll note what button is being pressed. Um, and it might give you some ideas as to what's happening to your code and when it happens. So we're just going to put this down here. I know you guys can't see it, but it's not really necessary. Just so you know that that's what's going on down there. And we're going to go ahead and run this code. And so you can see from my random clicking that RC is equal to 1 now, and RC is equal to 0. Well, I'll say we want RC to equal to 0 also. We're going to go ahead and click this button. We're going to continue our code, and you can see that RC0 turns to 0 right away. So we're going to go ahead and click RC1 and run our code. Now something to note is while the program is paused or while it's on a break command, when we press this button, so as of right now RC0 is 0, if we press this button it's not going to change right away. We actually have to run the code again for it to change. So there you see it changed to 1 and I actually pressed it twice so I had to press it a third time. So just so you understand that if you press the button and you don't see the value change and you're like ah oh, what the heck that's what's going on. So that's pretty much it. That's all you have to do to be able to toggle uh, input pins. And you can set up any pin or any combination here. So if you had an input on RA1, you select RA1 and set it to toggle. If we wanted to toggle something like, you know, RB5. Um, let's see, what else, what else do they have here that's a little more... Okay, it wants me to set that. Um, we have our AN, our our, uh, our ports, then we have ICO pin. Uh, this is actually interrupt um, on change pin. And if you're going to be doing interrupts with your program, and that's a whole different setup that you have to set up, where uh, basically it's a change in value on one of your pins. So um, you can go ahead and do that also. Uh, interrupt um, change on change is something that to be honest I don't fully understand and don't seem to be able to get to work so um, once I figure that out I'll go ahead and post a tutorial on it but for right now you know how to toggle your inputs for a digital signal in the next tutorial I'll show people who are using analog signals how to simulate an analog signal into here so that they can base that off their analog signals so that's it for this tutorial, and I'll see you guys in the next tutorial.